This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to make a beautiful website. That might be a deal breaker for you. I don't want to have regrets. Leave a shop feeling quite deflated. I never thought I'd have such an appreciation for an airport. Do we want to kind of break free from that? Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, hello, I'm Georgia and I am living in Singapore. So I previously made a video sharing with you guys why it's so hard for foreigners to leave Singapore. There's there's many, many reasons to stay in Singapore, lots of things keeping us here. And it's just a very hard country to leave because there's so many incredible things about it. On the flip side of that, I asked you guys if you would like to see the other side of the story and why foreigners might want to leave Singapore eventually. And just so many of you guys said that you wanted to see that video. So here we are today. I just wanna say that there are pros and cons to living in absolutely every country. You know me, I'm gonna be honest, but at the same time, I want you to know that I love this country and I appreciate it so much. I don't want you to feel like I'm slamming it or I'm preparing myself for the just get out of my country comments that may come my way. But honestly, let's let's be adults here, not take this too seriously. Um, and I just wanna share with you some reasons that foreigners may want to eventually leave Singapore. Excuse me, I'm trying to film. Are we, all, are we all okay? Are we ready to go? All right, let's get started. The first reason is that days pass very, very quickly here and it feels like months and years just kind of blend into each other in Singapore. Main reason being is that we don't have seasons here in Singapore. The sun rises and sun sets at the same time, 365 days a year. The temperature is always in the, like 30 to 30 degrees Celsius. Nothing changes and it just makes it very hard to to distinguish time like years honestly fly by it's absolutely crazy um, and you can't be like oh do you remember last autumn when we were here or when we did this because you can't distinguish any times of the year um, and that gets very very confusing so not only for the time reason but also for the seasons if you are a big lover of seasons if you love spring I love uh, autumn unfortunately you're just not gonna get that in Singapore and that might be a deal breaker for you um, I personally love tropical climates I've yeah, I'm honestly like I'm a tropical baby at heart but I have to say as the years have gone by I've started to think you know what I kind of do just miss like having a, a, an autumnal walk or you know I do miss these elements of winter so I think as years go by maybe you start to appreciate you know what you had and the seasons um, but in Singapore you you don't get that so that might be a deal breaker for you okay another a huge reason that foreigners may eventually leave Singapore is due to, to family. Um, if your family is still living in your home country, I can speak on from my perspective. When I was younger and I moved here in my mid twenties, early twenties, I was free and you know, I was like, it's fine, I, 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 can, I can do this and I'll go away for a few years. But I think as time goes on and like I'm coming up to my thirties now, you start to, value the importance of family maybe a little bit more um, and as your parents and family members members get older you want to kind of make sure that you appreciate that time with them um, that you do have with them for example my grandmother passed early this year and it's been really strange because i haven't quite come to terms with it because i haven't been back to the uk since because of the whole situation covid situation and little things like that i'm like oh like maybe i should have been there at the last few years maybe i should have spent more time with her and it's little things like that i don't want to have regrets um, when it comes to spending quality time with family and being there so family might be another deal breaker for you. If you guys are in a similar boat or if you've gone through a similar situation with family, do leave a comment below. Leave a comment below on all of these points I'm touching on. I would love to hear your experiences. So another one for me is I think in general, okay, Singaporeans aren't the kind of people to like strike up conversation with you on the street or be overly like um, conversational, that kind of thing. If we get on the MRT, everyone's just on their phones, including me, guilty. Um, we just go on our phone, I say we, <laughs> I'm not Singaporean, but kind of feel like it. Um, we go on our phones and we kind of just put our heads down. We don't really acknowledge anyone around us. And um, it was only recently when I went back to the UK last Christmas that I was going into shops and people were greeting me and saying, how are you? And um, people just striking up conversation, maybe with the cashier. And I was like, this is really nice. Like just random people talking to you. And I think 
sometimes living in another country you can feel um maybe like a lack of a sense of community and it's only as i've got older i've started to realize the value of having community and people around you um, i've mentioned before lots of times that even customer service here in singapore it's quite difficult because a lot of the times you you might not even be acknowledged when you go to pay for something there's not usually a hello or a goodbye um, sometimes and that's quite difficult because i lead i leave a shop feeling quite deflated like oh they didn't even like acknowledge my presence I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Okay, something else is, I think your money probably wouldn't go as far in Singapore. So if I had a million dollars to spend on a house or an apartment in Singapore, I'd be able to get, you know, a reasonably uh, sized condo apartment, maybe a two, three bed apartment, maybe, maybe only two bed. But if I had the same amount of money in the UK, I could have, well, it depends in the UK where you're going. Let's say if I was moving up to the north of the UK, for example, I could get a nice big house, um, a big plot of land, a nice big garden. And so your money doesn't go as far here. The same goes for if you wanted to own a car here, you're gonna probably spend around $100,000 just to be able to get a basic car here in Singapore. Um, and it's something that I think in the long term, foreigners might be like, why would I when I can go somewhere else and probably get more for my money? It depends what you want. It depends if you want, you're happy renting for the rest of your life or if you'd like to buy your own house. Honestly, it depends on everyone's needs and whatever, but I think um, that might be one of the reasons. Before we continue, I just wanna give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one solution for anyone looking to build a beautiful website from domains, hosting, analytics, everything is covered on Squarespace. So whether you're looking to build your own website or maybe even open an online store, this is the place to do it. They have so many beautiful templates to choose from and you can simply just drag and drop and customize it yourself. So if you want to check out Squarespace, do click the link down below in the description box for your free trial and then you can get 10% off with the first purchase of your website or domain. So thank you Squarespace and let's continue with the video. I've mentioned before many times, but Singapore is the perfect location as like a travel hub. Like Changi Airport is honestly the best in the world. It's absolutely incredible. I'm gonna miss it so much. I never thought I'd have such an appreciation for an airport. Changi is the best, but because Singapore is in such an amazing location, it means you can get to so many different locations in Asia really, really easily, quickly, efficiently. It's superb. Saying that, once you have maybe felt like you've done all your traveling outside of Singapore, it's hard to kind of find that sense of adventure within Singapore. I think that, you know, usually Singapore is the stopover place for tourists, maybe traveling somewhere on a long haul flight. So they'd only spend like a couple of days here here, sightseeing and that kind of thing. Um, I think if you've been here for years and years, you kind of feel like you've completed everything and you've seen everything like a few times over and that sense of adventure isn't really there anymore, mainly for the fact that Singapore is such a tiny country. You know, you can't go road trip in Singapore um, and explore like another part of the country because it is so tiny. In another country, you might be able to go camping or, um, you know, yeah, I mean, camping in the woods, like I miss camping so much. I used to love camping, but it's not like you can do that here. So if I wanted to go fishing or if I wanted to go to an incredible like lake and go swim in a lake or grow my own vegetable patch, go hiking or surfing or that kind of thing, that sense of adventure, you're not really gonna get it here. Like I said, there's so many great things about Singapore, but if you're, pref you know, if you're more of an adventurous kind of person, maybe you want that adventure for your children then perhaps Singapore isn't the place to do that. I know Justin and I have spoken about this a few times, but that is work-life balance. In Singapore, you can get lucky in Singapore. Um, I, I have friends who are able to establish a good work-life balance, but I think more for maybe Singaporeans, if you're working in a Singaporean company, um, it's very fast paced and so you may be, I mean, you're most likely, I know Justin and I can speak for ourselves, we've been expected to work overtime without any extra pay, and be accessible at all times on WhatsApp and kind of at the beck and call of the job. So there's not much time to switch off if at all and I would love you guys to leave your experiences below. I know everyone is different, so do be sure to comment below and let me know what you think about work-life balance in Singapore. I know so many of you have told me that you have 
a work-life balance, which is, I mean, brilliant. But um, do be prepared if you are in Singapore that um, work could kind of take over your life. And I think that it's something that's really starting to, I don't know, Justin and I are both, both, you know, looking at the bigger picture and thinking, like work has really consumed us so is it something we want to continue with or do we want to kind of break free from that and have more of a work-life balance so this is something that you might want to take into consideration okay so raising children in singapore is another topic maybe people will want to leave because it's incredibly expensive to raise children here um, especially if you want to send your kids to school here it does become very expensive although they will get a really i'm sure a fantastic level of education here um, so maybe swings and roundabouts you have to weigh up if what's important to you but um, I think you will need some extra cash to send your kids to school here and the last one before I speak about weather and there's literally a black cloud making its way over it's gonna pour with rain any moment but the weather um, I guess I kind of touched on this in the seasons but I think I think you either love the weather or you hate it I, I honestly feel like this climate isn't for everybody i feel like i i say you love it or hate it i feel like i have a love-hate relationship with it i am so so grateful that i get to see blue skies and even get to see sunshine on most days because i know how hard it was for me when i was in the uk and i had seasonal affective disorder and every winter i would get incredibly depressed and it's hard for Brits to not get that exposure to sunlight and vitamin D like we don't realize how important it is not only for our mood but for our health and so in Singapore I, I really do appreciate that at the same time I wish it was just maybe 10 degrees um, cooler a nice 24 degrees would be really lovely and comfortable um it just makes it very hard to do everyday things for example maybe going for a picnic isn't something that I like we never go for a picnic here because you know I don't know 20 minutes in and you'll probably be dripping in sweat like oh it's too hot I need to have a shower and if you go out for the day you're not really going to be out for the day you could be out for like maybe a couple of hours max and again you're dripping you feel uncomfortable and sweaty and you need to run home for a shower that's when it gets that's when it gets tough but the aircon everywhere is incredible aircons on the MRT aircon in the shopping malls in our houses um, that makes it much more bearable so again it's completely dependent on on the person and um, their preferences but that may be a reason like over the years that the heat might kind of become a bit unbearable so yes they are my points I hope you enjoyed this video found if you found it insightful if you agree with what I'm saying if you disagree let me know your thoughts I always love hearing them so yes do be sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it go follow me on instagram if you want to see more of me behind youtube and i will see you guys in the next one and it's absolutely pouring outside now <laughs> i did talk about tropical rain tropical rain guaranteed every december it is relentless but i love it i love i love thunderstorms i love watching storms come in i'm really gonna miss singapore honestly all right we'll save this for another time also so many of you keep asking me when we're leaving <laughs> i don't know if you want me gone right now or you don't want me to go i can't quite gauge what the uh the vibe is but we don't know yet and i will keep you guys in the loop and as soon as we know i will share it with you guys um like i said it we're always changing our minds and things happen and whatever but i will keep you guys in the loop um, I love you all, thank you for watching as always and I'll see you in the next one.